he hits 21 on his first hand. And again on his second. That's two out of two. Who'd bet against a hat-trick now? His sixth sense proves a winner. And in one fell swoop, Daniel squares his losses. How did you get that? Good one. I don't care if I lose now, that was fantastic. But Daniel needs to stay sharp as he heads for California and the showdown that really counts. At San Diego's Center for Brain Studies, he's about to face a series of tests. Does he really have some kind of sixth sense? An ability with numbers that goes beyond just memory? Neuroscientist Professor Ramachandran and his team are intrigued by the idea, but have their doubts. When Rama first came to me and said, hey, we've got this math savant that's coming here and he can do four by four multiplication and he can recognize primes and he can do uh, division out to so many decimal places. I thought, yeah, 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 he's probably faking it or he's got it memorized. You know, there's all sorts of techniques and I'm very much a big skeptic of this. With the pleasantries over, the testing can begin. 27 to the power of seven. six. Oh, can you do it to the power of seven? Yes, okay. Um, one, zero, Four, six, zero, three, five, three, two, zero, three. That's Excellent. The, be, better than the calculator. I, I need to see whether or not that zero, three is correct, but, you know, I have a feeling it, it would be. 31 to the power of six. Jet lag is wrecking his concentration and slowing him up. Seven five zero three six eight one. Spectacular. Daniel has certainly impressed the scientists with his ability to calculate, but they're keeping an open mind about his method. Okay, here we are confronted with somebody who claims to have amazing computational skills, and when we tested him with some simple numbers, doing a number, a two-digit two -digit number like 37 to the power of seven, uh, very, very quickly he gave us the accurate answer. And we did this with several different numbers. The question is, how is he doing it? One possibility is that Daniel has trained himself to do super-fast calculations in his head. As we're about to see, the human brain can do incredible things. Believe it or not, an extraordinary maths ability like Daniel's is something that ordinary people can learn. Here in Tokyo, some schools still teach the ancient art of the abacus. Children start learning the basic skills aged four and practice every day. By the time they're 12, these whiz kids are fast becoming human calculators. To be sure, lessons are not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> well, I'm sometimes very strict, so some child cries, perhaps or sometimes I hit them. But they keep coming here, I hope they're happy, but when they're training, they never have a smile on their faces. Nevertheless, Eight years of hard slog can produce jaw-dropping results. Twelve-year-old Kota Kazuka is top of the class. I practice two hours on weekdays and ten hours on the weekend. I want to become the national champion. Along with the other high flyers, he can now do huge calculations with a purely imaginary abacus, manipulating nothing but thin air.
Children like this show us that with enough practice, superfast mental calculation is possible. Hi. Hi. Come here, mate. Yet Daniel insists he's not doing this kind of conscious calculation at all. He says the answers come to him spontaneously out of his mental imagery. Rama and his team are finding it hard to trip Daniel up. But they're not finished with him yet. If Daniel's descriptions of his numbers are real, then they should also be consistent. Rama asks Daniel to model some of his numbers with Play-Doh, but doesn't tell him that he'll be retested the next day. It's hard to imagine him having memorized the shapes. The question is, are they the same shape? So we can actually compare that now. That's 242. Two. Now let's see his 242 two today. Overall, there's a remarkable similarity. That's very interesting. Let's take um, 58. Again, same story, very similar, same color, same shape, but not exactly the same. 810 from today, 810 from yesterday. And again, it's a very precise shape. So, the general impression is he seems to be producing the same shapes consistently. Daniel has cruised the consistency test. But Rama and his team are still dubious that Daniel reacts emotionally to certain numbers. I was a little bit mean, and I played a trick on Daniel. He, he said he loved pi because it was beautiful. It was just this wonderful, special shape. Well, if it's so beautiful for him, and he normally gets this wonderful, warm reaction from Pi, I thought that I would show him something that initially would look like Pi on the surface, 3.14, and tweak it a little bit. Throw in numbers like 6, which he doesn't like. The small electrodes attached to Daniel's fingers are like a lie detector. They'll measure any emotional response, good or bad. So if Daniel is shown a number that he really loves, there should be a clear-cut signal. So sure enough, I showed him this bastardized version of Pi, and we saw this very nice, you know, warm galvanic skin response, and then all, and it, it jumped up, and then all of a sudden it jumped again, and as he was scanning it, we kept getting another jolt, and another jolt, and another jolt, and it, it, it wouldn't stop. And afterwards, I was asking him, well, what's going on in your head when you were seeing that? And he said, well, you know, here's this beautiful number pi that I love, and I see it, and then as I'm looking at the landscape, all of a sudden there's a pit where it's not supposed to be. And, you know, this mountain is missing, and, and it's really, it's, it's wrong. And how could you do that to something so beautiful? And, and, you know, while it was a little bit mean to do that to him, it really shows the point that he does have some sense of emotion associated with these numbers because the, the skin response was off the charts. It was something you just can't fake. These are the things specifically that are showing me he's not bullshitting and he's not scamming. Even the mistakes that Daniel is making are the mistakes that tell me, you know what, this, this, is, this is legit. A faker wouldn't be doing this. So if Daniel is for real, how is he able to do such huge calculations without any conscious effort? When you did this computation in your head, what exactly was going on in your head? What were you doing? I see an image in my head, and that image starts to change, it starts to almost like evolve. It's quite vague at first. As I'm looking at it, it becomes clearer and clearer over a time, and then from, from that landscape, I can read the digits out. So it sort of gradually crystallizes? Yes. In a multiplication, the two numbers hover before him as distinct shapes. The gap in between makes a third shape, which Daniel experiences as a new number. The correct answer. He's doing math, but he doesn't even know it. When it comes to numbers, it seems that Daniel's brain really is doing something extraordinary. I'm blown away. Something the scientists can't yet get a handle on. This could be the linchpin that spawns off a new field of research. But we still had one last test for Daniel. 